Perfect. Katie Evans, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. You are welcome. Well, thanks for picking such a nice place. Mm-hmm. Megan's in Battersea. On the river. We should give no them a shout out because they've been perfectly <laughs> kind and let us sit in the corner and do this. So, um, yes, highly recommended and good coffee. Nice little spot. Yeah, perfect. So, um, we're going to be talking about marketing in difficult sectors because I think you've picked. You haven't picked easy choices when it comes to sectors to market in and sectors to do communication. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, I can't, that's it. How have, I mean, first off, let's go through what you do, what Swarm Market's all about. So I, I head up uh, PR and communications for Swarm Markets, and um, if you know anything about Bitcoin and crypto, then this will be your bag. If not, it will sound like Double Dutch to you. <laughs> um, so we're the first regulated decentralized exchange which is a bit of a boon for us because um, you know no one's been able to do this yet. Yep. And we've, we're working with some pretty progressive sort of legal minds in Germany, which is where we're based, um, to achieve this license status, yep. um, which means we're now able to go and kind of onboard new market participants and new assets into DeFi that hasn't been done before. Amazing. And how, so working for like a world, a world first, is that a double-edged sword when it comes to PR? So obviously there's a great story already, but do you find yourself having to educate people a bit more? Is it harder work to get the right coverage? I think it depends on what you're the world first in, and I think you also have to bear in mind that a lot of companies, a lot of products, a lot of services claim to be world first at something. Yeah, true. So you actually have to prove why you are and how you yeah. are the first. But you are a genuine world first. We believe well, we are, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you look at the kind of regulatory landscape that we're dealing with, yeah. um, you know, the German regulator is the only one that's provided any clarity and that's, that's who we've worked with to achieve this status. So yes, we, we believe we're the first. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, but in terms of, you know, trying to prove that or educate people on that, you're not just you're not just educating the press or um, clients or customers on yeah. what you are. You're educating them on what the sector is, what the whole service is. So you're doing a whole education piece for for the service for the industry as opposed yeah. to just your product. So the job is much bigger in a way. Yeah, you're kind of canvassing for like a larger, yeah. a much larger thing, entity, idea than yeah. just your like solo product. Products. You've been in crypto for a while, right? Yeah, so I joined D Toro um, about two and a half years ago. So yeah. I've been in I've been in crypto since about twenty nineteen. Yeah, would you say going into a position like you are a swarm, where it's a it's a relatively new business, you're taking it out to market. Brand new, yeah. Um, if you didn't have that background, like you would have had to really like, would that have been a struggle to get under the skin of the business and understand mm. like? I think um, certainly. That must be so important. Well, I think having the Taro kind of background did help. Well, that was my introduction into crypto, and that's where I started my education journey as yep. to what this is. Um, but I think also the, the difficulty now I have is, is journalists don't pick up my calls anymore right. because I'm not from a very well-known entity. One day I'll be in a position where they'll they'll be calling me, hopefully. Yep. But right now, that's not the case. So you have to like. It's a slug, like you have to work hard and you also have to be prepared for a lot of no's, a lot of um, just being ignored really, not having your emails responded to. Um, But just can't take it personally, it's the nature of the game. Yeah, even with the black book. (laughs) Even with the black book, yeah. Wow. So, how have you ended up, in terms of your career, like how have you ended up working for such difficult sectors. I mean that in a nice way. No, I have no idea. I mean, (laughs) if you look at my CV, it's schizophrenic. I mean, I started off doing... Probably better than mine. Pardon? Probably better than mine. (laughs) I'm not sure about that. But um, you're certainly very accomplished. But I don't... I started off in fashion, then I moved into charity, and then I decided I wasn't wasn't doing enough. I wasn't um, kind of fulfilling enough of what I thought was my potential so I thought right I'm going to move into something that I have no idea about and challenges me and I moved into financial services Wow. Um, having no sort of economical background yeah. or what have you. Do you just like having your brain scratched a bit? don't just like it having it scratched I like it aching. <laughs> okay. 
like I need to come I need to come home after a, after a long day and think oh my god I'm empty like there's nothing else to squeeze out of my brain I've, I've used that muscle today yeah yeah um, not all the time don't get me wrong sometimes like it's gonna be a lot but I, I love that feeling so I feel like I've, I've gone out and I've, and I've expanded my kind of horizons do you have a yearn for an easier life no not at all that, that would be dull <laughs> does that carry through into your personal life as well so um... probably i don't know if we should touch on my personal life okay. <laughs> yeah okay let's move on then um so in terms of the pr approach like how do you because you've taken swarm to market yes how has that process looked from a marketing and pr perspective how did you plan it out like, what were the key stages within it did you go into a bit of a detail on that what I can say on that is, um, and maybe like admitting this might not be the best thing, but instead of having a fixed strategy in mind, there was a, it was a very <laughs> tactical process. Right. So figuring out, you know, what works, what doesn't, yep. what messaging works, what messaging doesn't, when are certain um, areas of the press ready to talk about your product? I mean, we very much needed to target the crypto trade press first yep. and get buy-in there and almost get seal of approval there yep. because you have to understand how the media works. You know, media still read, or journalists still read other medias, not just sticking to their own. So they are going to be looking to these trade press publications for guidance on you know direction of travel or what companies to look out for so yeah. it was certainly important to get the seal of approval from from those uh, publications first yeah um and then that helped us bridge into kind of more mainstream financial news yeah. um and i think my main my main thing was actually building relationships with journalists and getting them in front of my co-founders um, one of the most important assets and tools I have at my disposal is I've got two fantastic co-founders who seriously know what they're talking about, have got like a wealth of knowledge, wealth of experience, both serial entrepreneurs. Yeah. They're, they're some of my best kind of tools, if you will. Yeah. Although that sounds really derogatory now. I'm no, but I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. But is that part of it? Like you come into an organization, you've got to look at the, yeah, the tools or the things you have at your disposal. Yeah, the resources. Make to make your story, story more stick. interesting. Exactly that. Yeah. And it's really difficult, but that in itself is difficult to say, oh, I know the minute you'll speak to them, you'll you'll get it. But then, you know, why on earth are they going to spend time talking yeah. to, to yeah. people they've never heard yeah. of or, or a company they've never heard of? So you do also have to do the basics in terms of, you know, framing the product in something that is relevant now. Right. Um, something that you know people can think okay how does this play into a wider theme or trend or experience and yep. why why should people care about this basically yep it's a very wobbly <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. um no I totally get that and i guess if you're going out to the crypto press first mm. who obviously know what they're talking about oh god yeah having two very credible founders with that story in terms of going to berlin getting the business regulated yeah that you, you wouldn't, surely you wouldn't get the coverage if you didn't have the credibility. That, but that's what PR is all about, I think. PR and marketing is about building credibility and building trust. Yeah. Um, and we've certain, I think we've been able to do that quite successfully because we've come at it from such a strong regulatory angle. You know, our main, our main principle objective at the moment is, is to build that trust, whether it's with yeah. clients or um, members of the press. Yeah. That's, that's what we're looking to build right now and, yeah. and using comms as an avenue for that. And are you starting to get a little bit more success with the mainstream press now that you've conquered so the it, crypto press? I would say that my strategy, if you want to call it a strategy, works in that respect. Yeah. I think, you know, we've still got some way to go with the crypto press or members of the crypto press. You know, yeah. it's we've got to keep that ticking over and, and make sure that they're fueled in the right way to talk yeah. about us and can yeah. talk about us. But now we are starting to still see spill over into more mainstream press, and you know we've had some nice announcements as well um, with some kind of big, big name um, brands in the UK that we've been able to talk about, um, and also in building up relationships with members of the press, they've also started coming to us for comment opportunities. So now we're starting to get our sorry about that. Now we're starting to get 
my co-founders' um, views and ideas and comments yep. filtered into um, other other topics oh, and conversations. Now you're getting that loop going. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So it's not just talking about or pushing our message. It's actually what else can they talk about on a sort of wider level and let's just start getting their voices into some more conversation. Yeah, amazing. That sounds really good. And um, like career-wise or kind of, yeah, I guess like career progression wise, when you go into a new business like Swarm or maybe you step into eToro, which is a, an earlier stage, mm. um, how do you start to kind of get your approach and strategy brought in and kind of get buy in on it? Like what's your. Yeah, what's at your Swarm? Process? Yeah, at Swarm or at eToro or. I mean, to be honest, at Swarm I've been lucky because I've just been given free reign with the situation. Um, you know, they've hired me to do a certain job and um, hopefully they can agree that I've fulfilled on that so far. Yeah. Um, and and they've just trusted me that's a big thing about one of these about this kind of like a comms role yeah you don't have people who who trust you to do the job or think that their way is better and aren't, aren't willing to listen yeah. to how you want to do things yeah it can be seriously undermining and the next minute you're just second guessing yourself the whole time yeah and that's yeah. not healthy yeah perfect and has the role changed a lot over the last 18 months because i imagine if you like you were saying like the key thing is building trust and relationships and credibility when you can't go and meet anyone, is that harder or like? No, if anything, it's or... easier. Really? Yeah, I mean, when I um, when I've been at other roles, because I've only been at we only launched Swarm four months ago, um, three four months ago. So before that, when I was at Utaro, I mean, it was much easier to actually get journalists on a Zoom call, and we would do virtual lunches rather than having to go out in person and it's because it's really difficult i mean for for journalists to get from get out from behind their desks and go and meet yep. people because they're so time poor i mean gosh if i had to guess for every one journalist how many prs there were trying to pitch to them yeah i feel sorry for the guys yes yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah it's not easy yeah so then trying to get some of their time in in real life in person is yeah. it's hard yeah i guess that goes back to that point of being able to frame what you're doing in a really effective way that cuts through as well. Um, so have you found so people have been more available in a way? or Because um, I've found it so, it's so different, isn't it? Like doing any, I think doing any kind of business or trying to build any business relationship, be that PR to press or you know, B2B to customers, whatever it is. Yeah. In a way, people are more available and have more time in another way it's harder to cut through because everyone's like pounding the emails i think it depends how effective your your pitch is to them yeah. to be honest and i know that sounds cliched but it's true if you've got something that feeds into what they if you can tap into what they need and you're able to to, to provide that information provide yeah. that story provide that cover then you will get more of their time and yeah. I think if you've already got a relationship with these people it's obviously a lot easier yeah. um, but yeah I mean I was I was I was quite lucky in the fact that I was able to have some nice conversations with journalists where we all kind of felt the same we all felt like we were working longer and yeah, harder that's true. Yeah. it just felt like everyone was just just exhausted by it yeah. so if anything just having like 20 minutes out for a conversation is actually quite nice. Yeah, that's a really human approach though, isn't it? Um, yeah. And what other, have you got any advice on people looking to cut through that obviously having a good product yeah. and actually like a genuine story behind the business, I'm sure, is like step number one. But once you've got that, you say that ratio of journalists to PRs, yeah. how, you know, how do you cut through the hundreds of other people that are emailing? Like, well, I think there's a few things you can do. I think sometimes it's just timing and whether you, your email gets seen, depending right. on workload, and that can never be changed. Yep. Um, most of the time, you have to pick up the phone. People just don't pick up the phone anymore. They just rely on your email getting through. When actually, if you want, if yep. you want people to look for your email or you know have it yep. flagged to them, you've got to actually speak to them. I the guess day. that immediately puts you in the top five ten percent doesn't well, it well even if it if it means that they turn around and say no quicker it still means that they're Got getting response. to you quicker yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah um so i think so picking up the phone definitely helps but also doing your research before you've even done the pitch i think people just 
sometimes make the mistake of, right, this is the title I want and this is what I'm going to go for, without actually looking at what that journalist has been writing about. Um, and not that I'm trying to plug any tools, but that's where you really need kind of social listening tools yeah. and media monitoring tools to figure out, you know, what these people are actually writing about yeah. when. You got any recommendations on tools? Oh no, that makes me sound like I'm being paid. We can put a caveat. Shall we put a caveat? Yeah. We won't have to hashtag add it. So I used to use Pulsar back in the day. That was more of a social media listening tool. Yeah. And I quite like that. It's just the usability was really good yeah. on that. Yeah. Um, and then when I was in previous roles for media monitoring, I've used Signal, which I okay. really like. So they use AI technology as well. Um, excuse me. How inconsiderate. I know, they don't even know we're doing an interview. Um, so Signal I really like from a media monitoring perspective and finding out about topics that are being spoken about in relation to my, my company, which I found really helpful. Does that scan the press and social? It does, it does wow. both. Because I've used, um, there's a talk with BuzzSumo, I've used a fair amount. Um, and that's pretty good at just scanning social for topics. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a really interesting recommendation. Mm. Yeah, brilliant. Alrighty, well look, thanks so much. Like, genuinely useful, very interesting. <laughs> Thank and, you for uh, having yeah. me. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.